go. So welcome to another episode of Rising Tide. The purpose of Rising Tide is to educate, heal, and empower by bringing on some of the world's most brilliant minds and purest souls. So we got a Rising Tide in the building, man, and I'm honored uh, that he has participated in the podcast. My boy Chad Spann. I met Chad when I was probably like 15 years old, freshman year of uh, high school, and just speaking honestly, uh, he's always been really a rising tide, uh, at least in my particular life. He's always pushed me uh, to go harder in the weight room because he was typically stronger than me. He always pushed me in track because he was typically faster than me. Um, so he's always kind of pushed me to go to higher and higher levels. We're going to get into his story today, uh, but he's someone uh, who I admire dearly. I'm going to let him introduce himself. Uh, so Chad, uh, just tell the people who you are and what it is that you do. Uh, my name is Chad Spann. I am my, uh, currently I am a high school English teacher. Um, I uh, played football in the NFL for about five years uh, and I am a business owner. I own the largest uh, football academy in the, uh, in the state uh, as well as I run um, the largest travel uh, all-star football team uh, in the state as well called uh, FBU Team Indiana. So uh, just a few things that I do. I'm also a financial advisor. Um, so I do quite a few things. I wear quite a few hats. <laughs> That's definitely what's up. So let's start um, at the beginning then. So, of course, when I met you at the age of 15, 16, you had aspirations of uh, going to the NFL. So just talk to me about where that actual desire came from and then the road to actually manifesting it? Man, um, I feel like, you know, when I was probably about, you know, eight or nine years old is when I made that decision that I wanted to play in the NFL. Um, and really, I when I made that decision um, as a child, <clears throat> like my life was kind of organized for me to make that dream come true. Um, you know, I had, you know, a bunch of different things, you know, we played high school football together. We were in track. Um, and, and, you know, we just, you know, I just focused on those types of things that will help me get there. You know, I tried to keep myself out of trouble, um, which meant, you know, I can't go out and party all the time with my friends. Um, I had to be responsible and I had to protect my dream. Um, I did things that were going to, to help benefit that dream, especially in high school. Like, uh, I ran track. Um, I had no intentions on, you know, running track in high school or, I mean, I'm sorry, in college or professionally or anything like that. Um, I was fast, but, um, you know, that helped me, uh, on the football field, you know, being as fast as I could be. Um, so, you know, that, and then, you know, finding a school that would help, you know, <clears throat> help get me to where I wanted to be. Uh, you know, I ended up, it was a long journey for myself. I had to, you know, I walked on to a division one school called Northern Illinois. Um, and so really, I, you know, I had the choice cause I only had one, uh, scholarship offer. Um, so I really got to choose where I went to school. Um, I, I picked Northern Illinois because they had a history of producing players at my position, um, that go into the NFL that are around my size. Uh, so, um, I picked that place. I, I also, like I said, I had aspirations post football to be a teacher and a, and a, and a football coach. So, um, so when I picked Northern Illinois, Northern Illinois was actually a great, uh, teacher school. So, um, that was one of my reasons I went there. Um, so, you know, there's just a lot of things that we can get into a little bit deeper. Um, but there's just a lot of different things, a lot of decisions that I made from a very young age to propel me to the to the the goals that I had and the you had mentioned uh about protecting your dream so I'm interested in the different tiers or the different uh the different levels in which you had to protect your dream because of course you know protecting your dream when you're in high school probably looks a little bit different you know than protecting your dream when you get to college and that sure. probably looks a little bit different than once you actually graduate college, you make it into the league. All right, now I'm here. Now protecting this is on a whole nother level. So talk to me about the different stages of protecting your dream. 
Um, in high school, it, 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 it was pretty simple. Um, you know, had to get the grades. You know, if I'm if I want to if I want to make it to the NFL, I um, I first have to make it to college. And the way I make it to college is I have to have the grades to get in. Um, as I said, you know, I, as as good as I was in high school, um, I did not have the the huge interest in from colleges because I was a smaller player. Um, so, you know, I had to look good everywhere else. So I had to have, I had to have the grades to get into school. I had to have no off the field issues. So that means, you know, you know, kids probably our age back then, you know, they, that's when, you know, they typically start, you know, smoking or drinking and, and things of that nature. I had to stay away from that. I had to stay as far away as uh, from that as I could. I didn't and mean, not I to didn't. cut you off, bro, but just to qualify, because I know your history, but the people who listening might not know it. So when you say, even though I was good, but I was small, can you qualify that with some of your stats? I know you probably still know them from like high school and some of the <laughs> numbers that you was putting up, just so they know, like, I'm not just talking to some like average little player or whatever that you was really right. putting in numbers though. All right. All right. So, um, my senior year, um, well, my junior year, I was, uh, I rushed for 1200 yards and 20 touchdowns. Um, and I, then I set the school record at North central to high school. We went to uh, for touchdowns in a season. Um, the very next year, uh, my senior year, I rushed for 2000 yards and, and 22 touchdowns. Um, so I set the record for, I, I hold many records, the, uh, uh, career rushing record, season rushing record, touchdowns, um, all these different things. Uh, I was, I was, you know, top 50 player in the state. So that's out of every player, all classes, all grades. Um, I was one of the top 50. I was a, I was an all-star. I was ranked the second best running back in the state. The first was, uh, a friend of mine named Darren Evans who ended up going to, he actually won Mr. Football and went to, uh, Virginia Tech. So, you know, if he, if Virginia Tech's number one, um, I had, I had zero division one scholarship offers and I was number two. So, you know, you, you, that give you the, uh, the uh just a little aspect of it from from the from college i'm sorry my dog's just walked in here um, no you're good but then you <laughs> also said something interesting because it's like if i and i don't i can't really remember his career as well as i remember yours but as far as professionally you outlasted him right yeah i played about two years longer than he did we actually came out the same year and we both went to the same team our rookie year and um I lasted just a little bit longer than he did. He had some injuries that uh, that cut his career short, but uh, no, I was able to last last a little bit longer, and and uh, you know, you know, grateful to 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 be able to do the things that I did, go see the places that I did, um, that I visited, and and you know, have a a career and come out healthy uh, for the most part, and and you know, be able to enjoy life. So, what was it? I know you were talking about, you know, you had to protect your dream and do certain things. So what was it about you that allowed you to outlast some of the other people who might have started with uh, uh, more of a head start or started kind of more advanced or perceived to be more advanced than you, but you were able to outlast them? What all do you feel were some contributing factors to that? Well, it's a lot of stuff, you know, um, you know, first it's, it's again, protecting the dream. Um, and I'll, I'll go a little further on that. Like when, when I got to college, you know, when it was, when I got to my senior year and, you know, I was, a, I was the starter. I was the guy, I was the face of the team the face of the university. You know, I had to slow down on my social life. Like I, I was not going out to bars and clubs, uh, every weekend and things like that. I had to, you know, unfortunately I had to sit at home while my friends did it. Um, because I had an image of rep a reputation to uphold in any type of situation like that can, can knock me down as far as, um, you know, making it to the NFL. So I had to be very cautious on, on what I did, who I surrounded myself with and, um, <clears throat> just be smart about what I'm doing now, now how I outlasted or, or even, you know, um, beat out people who were, uh, physically, gifted, uh, you know, bigger, stronger, faster than I was, um, people who had larger, um, you know, or more recognition, people who had, 
like the Darren Evans who, who went to Virginia Tech. It, it, it came down to your, your mindset and work ethic. So um, I was, you know, I was in, when I was in college, uh, I remember it was my sophomore year. There's, there's two unique things that I did. And, uh, you know, I, I've written about them. I've, I've, I've done interviews about them. But, you know, my sophomore year, I had a great GA, you know, graduate assistant who, who sat me down in, in, in the running back room one-on-one. And, you know, we, he, we went over, like, everything. So, you know, I, not, I didn't understand football from a running back standpoint. I understood football from a quarterback standpoint. So I understand what all the moving pieces are why they need to do what they need to do, how my, my personal um, uh, duties affect everyone else on the field. Um, so, I got, so I started out getting a very, very, very in-depth uh, understanding of the game. And I think that set, set me apart uh, from a lot of people. Another thing is, is I started to train. Um, I started to train at a higher level. And I, what I mean by that is, you know, when you're in college, you, 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 um, you know, you have your winter conditioning, you have your, your summer conditioning, you have your regular weights year, year round. Um, you know, I, when I was, when I was watching film uh, of, you know, with the, with that GA, I didn't watch film of myself. I watched film of other running backs who were, who were successful. I watched, uh, Ray Rice when he was in college. I watched Maurice Jones Jew when he was in college. Um, Michigan State had a guy named Javon Ringer. Uh, Georgia had a guy named Noshawn Moreno. You know, I, I studied their film instead of my own so that I could pick up on things that, that they did and they were very successful at, um, skill sets that they possessed that I did not possess. And <clears throat> so I understood, the, I understood the game. I learned their skill sets. And then I went out to the field and I took one of our strength and conditioning coaches and the GA that I worked with. And I would say, Hey, I need to, you know, develop this skill set. Okay. Let's, let's put some drills together that'll help me do so. Um, so I started doing this, you know, around my, uh, my, my sophomore year, uh, at, right after the season, my sophomore year. And it was just me one-on-one uh, with, I'm sorry, it was two-on-one. I had my, my coach and my, and my strength coach, and myself and we're just doing drills kind of that we're just making up you know speed and agility um um stuff like uh you know mastering spin moves mastering stiff arms and when to do it and why just just little things that you think you think come naturally to a to a running back in football that really don't so um you know i had to broaden my horizons i wasn't necessarily locked in on who i was i knew i needed to grow as a player and that is what I did, you know, my, my, my junior, I mean, my sophomore year. And then, you know. So let's the, dive a little bit deeper into that. Not to cut you off, bro, but you're saying something that's intriguing me because, like you said, I'm coming out of high school and you're the second ranked running back in the whole state. Right. You're used to, you know, especially when not compared to Devin or Darren, you typically are the best in anybody that you're around. So it's mm-hmm. like. How did you have that humility to even though everybody else around you and all your peers is looking at you like, dude, you the best person that you we, right. we got or we see, but yet still in your mind, you're like, I I'm still got to do stuff to get better. <laughs> yeah. So what's right. that mentality like? Man, it's tough. You know, it's 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 having an uh, understanding of like, you know, I always I'm always ready to learn. OK, I'm always wanting wanting to learn something new. Um And, you know, even right now, like I read constantly because I always I'm always trying to pick up new knowledge on something. Um, When I took it, when you take it to football, um, I was always, always, always trying to develop skill sets that I don't have. Okay, I am a five foot eight, 190 pound running back, you know, my junior year of college. Then I, I play like I'm 220 pounds. Okay, so that's one skill set that I had to pick up. I had to pick up. I had to learn how to be more physical. I had to learn how to be a downhill physical running back. That's what my coaches wanted. So that's what I had to develop, and and so that's what I studied. Bigger backs. Okay, how do how does this this back it was really Javon Ringer? Okay, how does he play at this size and still seem like he's fast, but still play strong? How does know Sean Moreno, who's not very fast at all, but he's also not humongous either. Okay, so how does 
how does he balance the speed and the agility? You know, so like you said, it, it, it comes with some humility, but it also just my knowledge. I mean, my, my, my thirst to, to learn and, and develop and continue to grow as a person, as a player. You know, I wanted to. When I did you first to, notice that within yourself? I was probably it was probably my my freshman year of college, freshman year of college. Um, That's when you noticed that you always wanted to learn or get better right, and all that. Right, right, right. I'm constantly studying film. Like I said, I didn't watch film of myself. Um, you know, a lot of people do that and they get caught up in that. And what they what they don't realize is you know, there's only so many mistakes. You can correct your mistakes, but you can't learn how to do new things or get better um, when you're just when you're watching yourself. You know, so you got to get out of your comfort zone. And you got to watch somebody else do it and pick up on the little things that they do. And, and see how you can incorporate the things that they do into your game. And I'm not necessarily talking about football. This is all aspects of life, teaching, um, coaching, um, just anything. Y you want to find people who are better and try to pick up on the little things that they can do or that they do naturally that you don't do. And then add that to your repertoire, figure out how to add it to your repertoire. And, and I kept this routine going, not just, you know, I'd said I started in my sophomore year. I kept this routine going all the way through my NFL career. Um, you know, when, when I got, when the season ended, um, like when I was in Houston, I played for the Houston Texans for, um, for two years. When, when the season ended my first year, I got on a plane. I didn't go home and chill for a couple of weeks. I got on a plane and I flew to, to Minnesota where my graduate assistant at Northern Illinois, he was now working at Minnesota and me and him spent two weeks working on the same drill or not the same drills, but working on new drills, trying to develop new skill sets and, and, and really develop my game into, you know, the, to the next level. So um, it just, it, it, it just came down to the mindset that I, I knew I wanted to be better than what I was. Um, and, and there are guys better than me. And there are, and, and not only that are guys better than me, there's guys that do things differently. You know, my way is not all, I can't say my way is the best way because other guys do it, do it differently. So let me pick up on the things that they do that make them special and add that to my game. So let me ask you, like, of course, you said you had the desire to be in the NFL since you were like eight or nine and you were working diligently your whole life to achieve that goal. At what point in time, did you realize like, oh, this, this is about to happen. Like I'm almost, yo, this is, <laughs> this is a reality now. Like what, right. at what point in time did that sink into you? It was probably my junior year. Um, my junior year of college, I, I ended up, I rushed for 12,000 or 1200 yards. I'm sorry. And I scored 20 touchdowns and I was, from the from from Northern Illinois, which is a MAC school, a smaller Division One school, um, I was third in the nation in um, rushing touchdowns. You know, I got beat out by the, the running back from Stanford. Uh, I can't remember his name right now, but he played a couple years in the NFL. Um, but uh, I just I was just at that I was at that that level where you know if I have another good season like this, there's a pretty good chance that I, I go on to the NFL. And, and it's a funny thing that, you know, we talk about protecting the dream. Like there's, a, I have a, 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 a real funny story um, about that. It was that summer. Um, I went to a club and, uh, in, in DeKalb where North Illinois is. And I was at a club with some friends and a fight broke out outside. And so you know, every, you know, everybody rushes outside, see what's going on. And there's police already out there. And, you know, while I'm standing there, you know, there's a, a police officer walks up to me and he says, Chad, get in your car and go home. And that blew me away because one, he knew exactly who I was. So it wasn't and you like, didn't know him <laughs> and I didn't know him at all. I've never had a conversation with this man ever. And he knew exactly who I was. Um, and, and he was, you know, he looked out for me, you know, he didn't want me to get caught up in, in, in anything, but, you know, he also, it, it, it helped me understand like, okay, you know, you've got a lot on the line because there's people out here who, who, who you've never met, who not only know who you are, they can recognize you and they're looking out for you. So you need to make sure that you are doing whatever you can to get where you need to be 
um, because these people, like like this police officer, are counting on you. So that was a real eye, eye-opening um, event for me. And, and that's when I made the decision, like, you know what, I probably, I probably need to chill. Like, this is my last year. Um, I need to make sure that I am not, not that I was a huge partier or thing like that or anything like that anyways, but I need to make sure that I'm putting myself in the best situation to be successful. No facts, facts. And that's, I feel that that is really what sabotages a lot of athletes is that they don't think about, like you just said, a lot of times that being super dope on the court or on the field gives people inflated, inflated confidence and a lot of times it turns into arrogance and they start to feel like that they can do things without consequences. Right. And I've just seen a lot of people throw away crazy opportunities because they were thinking like, oh, I'm praised all the time, so this can't happen to me. And it's just right. like not – just like the cop told you that certain people are out here and they're trying to look out for you, there are other people out here who know who you are that right. don't want to look out for you. Right. And they're waiting right. on the opportunity right. to stop you crabs in a the barrel. They're right. waiting on the opportunity to catch you to slipping. Bring me down. You can be like, look, mm-hmm. I told you. I remember uh, yep. I was talking to my uncle, and my uncle is very a high-level uh, person in some engineering company, uh, very, very high level. And he was telling me, uh, Chris, you know how many times, because uh, I had to learn not to be hot tempered or uh, reactive to certain things. And he was like, you don't think, you know, I've had times where I wanted to snap off the handle. He was like, but I got stuff to lose. And I know that it's all these people that's waiting to try to trick me out of my position so I can snap on them. And they could be like, look, I told you, this is who he was from the first place. I told you he shouldn't have this high position. I told you he shouldn't be, because look, he's aggressive. He's angry. He'd be snapping on people. So he was like, you got to make sure that you don't put yourself in a position that will pleasure somebody to take the good from you. So right. that's what I was hearing. Uh, and honestly, now that I'm thinking about thinking back to all the times, all the years that we've known each other growing up, you've pretty much always been like that. Yeah. Like you said, you would go out to a party and all that, but you were never one to do out there things that people that didn't have anything to lose would do. You wasn't right. really <laughs> you right. wasn't really that type of person. So <laughs> that's what's up knowing that you've carried that quality throughout your whole life. So now you get to the NFL. How was that feeling like when you first arrived? You first put on that jersey or you first get that jersey or when you first get announced that you're on this team? Uh I mean it was amazing, man. You know, it's it was a childhood dream come true. Uh, you know, what's really interesting is, is sophomore year of high school, um, I played in the, our, our North Central football team, we played in what's called the Payback Classic, which was Peyton Manning um, hosted a, a, not a football tournament, but he hosted a football night for high schools. It was about, game was six, legendary. right, it was about six games that, that played all at the uh, RCA Dome um, on that Friday night. So, you know, it, it's, it, it's, 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 it was uh, surreal when, you know, I played in this game as a sophomore in high school. Now, what, um, seven years later, Peyton Manning's my teammate, you know. Mm-hmm. So um, that was one of the most interesting things ever. You know, I, 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 I could not believe it. It was, you know, it, it's everything you wanted, everything you, you've worked for in your life. Um, you know, especially being a Colts fan your whole life, um, growing up and Peyton Manning being that guy. And now you are in the same locker room with him. You are in meetings with him. You are on the field with him. And and what's even cooler is Peyton, uh, you know, Peyton took me aside and, and now he didn't play that season that I came out, but he took me aside. He had me, held me after practice. We did extra drills, extra, uh, just little workouts to, to, to improve. And, and when it comes to, you know, now, now that I coach football, like, some of the philosophies and, and things that I learned from Peyton Manning back in 2011 are things that I still do now uh, as a football coach. Um, still, still the same mindset philosophies that I, I carry on. You know, I, guess I, didn't, I, I didn't mention this earlier. I'm the offensive coordinator at Warren Central High School, which was our, one of our rivals back when we were in, when we were in high school. The so major the, rival. All right, so I went to the dark side. <laughs> But, and surprisingly, um, the game that you're referring to, they played Warren. <laughs> and we played Warren in that game. You're right. 
So um, it was, uh, it was, it was, it was a dream come true. Uh, it was super surreal. And, and you, you don't really realize it. Well, you realize it one, when you walk into the locker room for the first time, you see, you see your name on the back of the chair and your Jersey hanging up with your name on it. Um, so that, that was amazing one, but my, my goal in life or with this was like, I wanted my grandfather who has always been a father figure to me. I wanted him to be at my first football game in the NFL. And that was, that was not something that I thought of when I was a senior in high school or a senior in college about to go to the NFL. That was something that I thought of when I was in high school. Like I want to make it to the NFL and I want to make sure my grandfather was there. So I was very, very fortunate that my very first NFL game, uh, back in 2000, um, 2011, uh, my grandfather actually was uh, was able to get on the field and um, you know take pictures and and, and meet a few and a, a few uh, uh, of my teammates and things like that. So uh, how did that feel? Man, it was amazing. It was it was like I said. It, that's that's what I did it for. You know, um, that was probably met, better than just getting in the feeling of just getting into the NFL by itself. Right, wasn't it? r- right, right. So like my I wasn't. Yeah, you know, I'm very I'm a very realistic person. So. Like my goal was never ever to be the greatest running back in the NFL of all time. That's hard. That's a hard goal to do. I mean, there's guys, Barry Sanders, Emmitt Smith, um, guys, when we were coming out, Adrian Peterson, you know, these dudes are, are, uh, uh, you know, hall of fame. They're going to be the greatest all of, of all time, all for all time. Now I wanted to, but I, what was realistic is for me to get there and, you know, understand that it's a means to an end. I'm going to be here for a limited amount of time. Now let's make the most out of it while I'm here. So with that understanding, that first day, that first game, when I made it, that was probably the 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 best achievement that I made, that I had in the NFL. Now I played in the playoffs. Um, I, I made money doing it, but, you know, being able to, to say that, you know, I wanted to play in the NFL and I want my grandfather to be there to see it. You know, my father figured to be there to see it and then to accomplish that, you know, 10 years later. Like that's that was what everything I needed for from playing in the NFL. And it shows you that anything is possible, regardless of how far removed (laughs) it may seem that, like you said, with hard work, diligence and protecting the dream, you can sure manifest it. So then you stay in the league, you said five years. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, And then transition out. Now, I want, I'm curious as to how was that transition from basically being identified as an athlete your whole life to now I'm stepping out and I'm pivoting and I'm trying something new. So what was that transition like and what did you immediately transition to? The transition um, mentally was not hard. Um, as I said, football was a means to an end. And I understood that, you know, football got me an education. Football got me kind of a head start on life as far as um, financially. But um, it also pushed me back some in life because once my career is over, you know, now I'm 27 years old going into the workforce for the first time. And, you know, all my all my counterparts went into the workforce at 22, 23. So it was it was a small adjustment being you know kind of the older guy who is just now getting started um but i actually transitioned into being a a a financial advisor immediately after i played and and to talk about how i played how i finished real quick is is i uh i tore my achilles and which is you know as you know it's a devastating devastating injury you know it usually takes about 15 months to recover. And so I, uh, I tore it, I got my surgery. Um, and I started the rehab process. And what, what, what's amazing is, like I said, it's about a 15 month recovery. Um, at month two, they allow you to take your boot off and try to start walking. Um, and two, at month two, I was running. Um, Wow. Um, at month, at month five or at month four, they allow you to try to jog on a treadmill. At month four, I was doing speed and agility, ladder work, and things like that. 
Um, I was fully cleared medically to return to resume football at five months. Um, so I cut the recovery time <laughs> by two thirds. Wow. And, um, and that is again, just hard work, you know, determination, like, you know, I'm going to like, I'm not going to let this, you know, be the reason why I stopped playing football or, or whatever, you know, I always wanted to make sure I always wanted to make sure, and this is again, while I was in high school, before I even made it to college, before I made it to the NFL, I always knew I wanted to walk away from the game. I didn't want the game to walk away from me. So when I, when I recovered from, when I recovered from uh, the Achilles, um, I was a free agent at the time. Uh, I had some workouts. I did them and, and, you know, they, they offered, they offered contracts and, and I just didn't feel, I just didn't feel like I wanted to do it anymore. It wasn't the fact that, um, it wasn't the fact that, you know, I'm tired of football. I don't want to get hurt again or anything like that. It was, it was like, I've, I've given this game so much. I've given it so much of my life, so much of my time mentally. Um, I gave this injury so much of my time and energy um, to be able to recover in as fast as I did. And I just felt like this is a good time to walk away. So, um, you know, at 27 years old, after I tore my Achilles, after five years, you know, I, de I decided, you know, it's time for me to hang it up. Even though I was already cleared to go back, I decided it was, it was, it was time to hang it up. I was, Did people try know, to talk you out of it or say you was crazy or, man, you tripping, bro. You know how much money you can get. What you going to do, Chad? Like, did you have um, those conversations? Not a whole lot. Not a whole lot, man. Surprisingly, like, I, you know, I wanted to settle down. You know, I played for quite a few teams. Um, so I traveled a lot. I lived in I've lived in uh, Houston. I've lived in I've lived in uh, Tampa. I've lived in New York. Um you know, I've lived in a, quite a few, I live in Pittsburgh for two years. So I, you know, I've traveled a lot. I got to go to London. I played football games in London. I played football games in Canada. Um, I've traveled a lot. I've seen a lot. And, and the whole time I always understood, like I said, football is a means to an end. And, you know, my end game is I'm more than a football player in, in life. Okay. I'm going to be more than this. I'm going to not be a football player a lot longer than I was a football player. So, you know, at when you, when I just felt comfortable, you know, it, it was, it wasn't even, it wasn't even hard to walk away. It was okay. You know, I did the tryouts. I mean, I did the workouts. I felt great. And when I walked off the field, I just knew I'm done. I don't want to do this. I want to, I'm ready to start the next chapter of life. Personally, um, uh, uh, career wise, I was ready to start the next thing. So I actually ended up, um, I went to the, the financial firm that handled all of my finances, uh, brought me in and I started out as a, as a, as a financial advisor, um, loved it, loved the work, um, got pretty good at it. Um, and then I kind of transitioned because I wanted to coach football. Uh, I tr transitioned into coaching and then uh, and then later teaching. They had they had a job opening. So I took it. So um, I kind of put financial advising on the back burner for a little bit. And um, I got into what I set out to do to begin with. You know, like I said, I went to college to be a football coach, to learn how to be a teacher and a football coach. And now I, I was given an opportunity to do that at a at a very, a very good football high school so I took that opportunity and um and I you know I loved it you know I I I was the running back coach at Warren Central um for a year in 2016 um 2017 I got promoted and I was the offensive coordinator um and we were actually pretty good uh, we lost to the state championship team in the playoffs, which was Ben Davis at the time. The very next year, um, I had the uh, state's all-time uh, best offense. Um, we went 14-0, uh, and 0 and we won state. Uh, we set r records uh, that were ridiculous. My running back that year, who I, I he was a senior that year. I had him since he was a sophomore. Um, he 
it was, it was actually really cool because I don't know if you remember this. Our senior year, we played Center Grove, and I was sick. I had the flu, um, and I didn't go to school that week, but I ended up playing in the game. I thought uh, that's I the one you broke the records, right? The right, best touchdowns right. in the game. It is. Yeah, you went crazy. Yeah. So I, I rushed for uh, – now, like I said, I didn't practice at all that week. Coach just told me to go home. Um, I went to school like a day and a half. And I went to school on thir- half the day on Thursday and then all day on Friday because that was the rules for you to play. You had to go to school the day of the, of the competition. So um, I, I went to school. I didn't practice all week. Um, and then in that game, like I remember it's, I was freezing, shivering on the sideline. I had one of them first down bubble coats. I had that over my shoulder pads, trying to keep myself warm. And, um, I ended up rushing for 320 yards and five touchdowns. So I set quite a few records in the mic that, that night against center Grove. But, um, it was actually pretty cool because that running back that I coached, uh, back in 2018, the year that we won state and we broke all these records, he broke my rushing record in that game. Um, this kid rushed for 300 and I think 60 yards against Lawrence central that game. Uh, oh he God. was, he was unstoppable. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> like- so, um, and then uh, two weeks after that, he rushed for 400 yards in a game. So, really, <laughs> yeah, he was, uh, I mean, he was damn good. Um, so, how does that back. make you feel being able to, like, I guess I know you probably be able to see yourself in some of these kids and then being able to pour into them the stuff that you learned along your way that, like, man, I wish somebody would have told me this at, you know, right. this particular age. And, you know, I've been the course, you know, so I know you got to – certain level of respect from them where they actually listen to you you're yep. probably a huge influence because you're not just like you know like a sports analysis person that you know ain't never played the game you like man right, I didn't right, played right. it at every level I didn't play it at the highest level right. and now I'm trying to come back to show y'all so what is that actually like man it was good man I had I had a, a few really 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 talented players and you know they really bought into to what I was trying to teach them and And so that year, I mean, they all three, I had a quarterback, a quarterback, wide receiver and running back. And then they all three had just amazing seasons. Quarterback threw for 3000 yards. Um, Wide receiver had 1700 yards receiving. Um, The running back had 3000 yards rushing. Um, It was, I mean, it was, it was the best thing you could ask for. And the wide receiver is uh, now at, at Purdue uh, he's about to start his sophomore season. He was Big Ten freshman of the year last year. Uh, he was an All-American last year. Um, the quarterback is uh, a backup quarterback at Alabama right now, um, going into his red shirt freshman year. Um, the running back is the starting running back at Southern Illinois. Um, and, and what's crazy about that, what's even better about that, is, you know, I, I, of course, I have a strong relationship with all three of these boys, but especially the running back because I spent the most time with him. Um, the GA that I talked about that that helped me um, when I was a sophomore in, in college, uh, the guy that I would I would fly to wherever he was in the country and we would train in the offseason while I was in the NFL. He is my kid's running back coach at Southern Illinois. That's part of the reason why he decided to go there. So, wow. you know, that – that coach has been a mentor to me all this time. And now, you know, my, my running back, the guy that I developed, uh, he now gets to mentor him as well. So that's, that's pretty cool for me. That is super cool. So what are some of like the lessons that you try to instill in these kids as you're coaching and running your travel league? Like what are some of the intangibles that you try to instill in them and some of the mindset things? Man, it's the, the biggest thing is, is just how you approach the game, the attitude, and how you approach anything. Like I watched, um, I watched the Michael Jordan, uh, the the Bull special, um, the, last uh, the Last Dance. Yeah, and you know, I, I, I first off, I didn't watch it when everybody else watched it. So when it was live playing during the pandemic, like I wasn't watching it. I, I was like, I I really do want to watch this, but I want to wait for all the Twitter hype all the conversations to die down so I can just like really lock in and focus on it. 
And it, I was surprised, like, a lot of people came away, like, not liking Michael Jordan more after they watched it. Like, oh, Michael Jordan's a, a jerk. He's an a-hole, blah, 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 blah. And when I watched it, I saw um, a guy who was a master at his craft. Um, and and I don't know if you've ever you've, – you've ever – I'm sure you've read the, read the book uh, 48 Laws of Power – um, yeah. or, or there's a he's that that author's written another book called Mastery, yeah. and he talk and he talks about um, you know all the hours the all the time all the the mindset that you have to have to become a master at something, and when I sat there and I listened to Michael Jordan talk about you know his approach to the game and his thought process. And, and and how he really handled the pressure, the 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 just everything that he did, and still come out and perform the way that he did on a night in night out basis. Like I saw myself, I was like, this is exactly who I am. Like sometimes I've been called a jerk before, but it's not because I'm really being a jerk. It's because I I know where I want to go. I know where we can go, and I know how. The only way I know how to get there is to work for it. And and so I need everybody on the same page as me and work just as hard and as diligently as I am so that we can get where we want to go. And, um, you know, and that, and, and it worked, you know, like I said, I did those extra workouts with my sophomore, junior, junior and senior year. You know, I was the first half of my sophomore year. It started out with just being me. We went to a bowl game that year and, a couple of a couple of younger players came up to me after the bowl game or like, you know, I've really seen how hard you've worked and I'm going to work just as hard as you have. You are. So the next year when I started doing those extra workouts again, those one on ones, it wasn't one on one anymore. It's like 15 guys were out there. And then the next year after that, it was like 35, 40 guys all doing my workout that I set aside for me, you know, because they were all interested in getting better and they saw the results of, of, of me getting better. And, um, they wanted to buy into the same thing. So it's you know, funny, that, bro, because it's like, that's like a trend that seems to follow you because even back in high school, I remember you were the first person I ever met that had a personal trainer and right. you used to go to your personal trainer things. And then you would come to track practice and you will be doing them, and then I'll hop over there by you and be like, yo, what you got going on over here? Right. Like, yeah, these hip things my coach told me to do, these little hip stretches to get my right. hip flexor going and all that. And I'll just start doing it with you. Like, oh, well, nah, because like I told you, you've always me been a rising tide, at least in my eyes, because you've always pushed me to want to be better. Like, oh, man, Chad ain't about to, you know, be faster than me. Like, even though you always right. was, but I was like, nah, <laughs> like, I'm about to work harder. Uh, he ain't right. about to be stronger than me. I'm about to work harder. So I remember just being pushed and being pushed and being pushed. I don't think that I would have accomplished a lot that I did sports-wise had I not had somebody that was a rising tide like you pushing. And like I said, investing outside of uh, – like B. Ken is another example of it. Uh, I When I would see B. Ken do the amazing things he would do in track, I would be like, man, how is he – doing this stuff how does he got so much endurance and then somebody was like well you know after track practice he runs like four miles every day right i was like BK what was, he was self-made he was self-made oh. but he wasn't because he was not he was not that athletic he was not that great and he had his own determination that he want what he wanted to do and he pushed himself to be where he went where he got and and that's, I mean, I'm the, I think I'm the, the exact same thing. Like I pushed myself, I willed myself to be in the NFL. There's not a whole lot of guys running backs who are five foot eight, 200 pounds in the NFL, especially not back in 2011. So Bro, like I remember I said, when your hand was broke, dog, like <laughs> he literally do had a cast on his, and he's right-handed. Like, right. and he had a cast on his right hand, bro, and still played the game as a running right. back, bro. I was right. on the sideline, like. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, and that's not that's not the only time stuff like that's happened. Like, I played in college. I, I tore my labrum in a game, and that's in your shoulder. And if I if I did this, my shoulder would, f would fall out of socket. Like, there's nothing literally holding my shoulder in its socket. And, like, I did it during a game. I was playing Ball State. And we still had three games left in the season. And so when I did it, you know, they, they told me the prognosis. They're like, you're going to need surgery. 
I said, they said, if you can deal with the pain, you can play with it. It's not going to get worse. Um, but if you can deal with the pain, you can play with it and do surgery after the season. So just think about playing running back. I, I lower my shoulder. I run through people, um, you know, all the time. I'm constantly banging my shoulders. And I play, I play three full games with my shoulder popping in and out whenever it wanted to. And every time popped out, it was excruciating pain. But – I mean, I remember like I walked around campus that first day, that first day I'm walking around campus in a sling, like nobody, please, nobody come close to my arm. <laughs> I please don't touch me, please. Um, and I didn't practice. I, I, I could, well, I did practice, but I didn't get, I wasn't, nobody was allowed to touch me. And, um, you know, by the end of the week I played, I played pretty strong. I actually played really well. Um, I played three games like that. Uh, had surgery after the season. Um, so, you know, that's something that, that I've all, always done. Even in the NFL, my rookie year, I remember it was the last game of preseason and uh, with the Colts. And the opening kickoff, I tear my hamstring. I mean, third-degree tear. That thing's like hanging on by thread. And I play the entire game with a, with a torn hamstring. And I didn't know it. I know my hamstring was messed up. But – I just, you know, I went over to the trainer and I, and I started doing leg swings. Like, hey, I just got to keep it warm. If I can keep it warm, I can keep running. If it cools off, it's going to lock up and I can't play. So, uh, you know, I did that. And, and then, you know, I had a very successful game. Um, I got my MRI. The or we went and got an MRI the very next day. The day after that, uh, they called me in and they're like, hey, um, when did you say you, you, you uh, hurt your hamstring? I said, on the opening kickoff. It was like, well, I'm looking at your MRI, and um, there's no way you should have played the way that you played <laughs> with your hamstring looking the way it does. So, um, like I said, it was literally holding on by a thread, and I just willed myself to, to, to continue to play. And, and How has and, that and, mental toughness translated and, like, helped when it comes to just life and business endeavors and all that? Um, I think it's helped quite a bit. Um, one thing that I did, like I said, I, I enjoy reading. And, and I, when I was in the NFL, I remember my rookie year uh, in training camp, like waking up at, at 5 a.m. every day to go, you know, do the exact same thing. It was, it gets mundane. It gets tiring. And I remember laying in bed like, yo, do you really want to do this for the next four, five, six, seven, eight years? Like, is this really what you want to do? Because this is, this is like, it is hard. A football NFL training camp is hard. So with that being said, I, um, you know, after my rookie year, I started, to, I started to think about, okay, you know, I do all this stuff physically to get better, to improve, um, to become a better athlete, uh, to become a better, a more well-rounded running back. Um, I do all this, all this training, but I never really train my mind. So I ended up, I, I try to compare, okay, so what is the closest thing to training camp that somebody has ever done in life? And let me see if I can find a book on it. And what I came up with was Navy SEALs. Uh, Navy SEAL training is the most intense thing that you can possibly do. And it is so hard on purpose because they want people to quit. They do not want yes. everybody to, they don't want everybody to pass. They don't want everybody to get through because, because they need hard nosed tough guys who could fight through pain, fight through, you know, the mental, the mental lapses and things like that, be able to concentrate when, 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 uh, you know, their life is on the line, you know? Um, so I, I started reading these memoirs of, of Navy SEALs and every memoir started out with, Every single one started out with, okay, this is Navy SEAL training, and this is how it starts, and this is how it goes, and these are all the different things that they try to do to get you to quit, <laughs> to get you to tap out. They're going to do all these different things, and you just got to you just gotta keep pushing forward. And I remember one guy said, he used this, this little moniker, and he was like, you know, when you, when, when you, you wake up, they wake you up at two o'clock in the morning, they make you put on 75 pounds worth of, of gear. And then you got to go run seven miles in the sand, um, in boots, you know, he, what, the thing that got him through it was he just, he just kept saying to himself, 
keep putting one foot in front of the other, one foot in front of the other, left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot. And that's what got him through it. Not, not letting anything else distract him, talk him out of, or, or, or make him want to quit. He's just, he just was content with, if I just put my, my one foot in front of the other and continue to do that, I'm going to make it. And, and so that's what kind of started my mental training that, um, that helped me prepare for camp, helped me prepare for playing in the NFL and was really, you know, propelled me to, um, you know, my careers outside the NFL. Um, you know, the entrepreneurship of, you know, starting and running my own business, two businesses, um, you know, becoming a, a football coach at, at one of the premier high schools in the country and, 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 and dealing with top talent, uh, high school talent and developing it. And, and the pressure's on every week, you know, there's the, the alumni, the fans, the community, they're all coming out to all these games and they, and they want to see Warren, Warren Central just win. So putting it there, um, you know, putting it in, you know, the different things of, of, uh, you know, being a financial advisor, um, it, it, it's just, it just helped everywhere, but it, it comes down to doing it, just do it, you know, keep putting one foot in front of the other. And, and you'd be so surprised on how much you'll get accomplished when you just drowned out all the noise and do what you know you need to do. No, that's facts. That's facts. Man, bro, I feel like I could definitely talk to you all day. We are coming up on that hour joint. So talk to me a little bit about um, what you're doing with the youth in this traveling program that you have. So um, when I moved back to Indianapolis uh, after I retired, um, I was in the process of starting a football academy. Um, and – I actually had a decent turnout. Um, we, me and, and a couple of high school coaches in the area um, held these workouts and they were training. They were just all skill development. And we started doing it and we started getting more and more kids. And like I said, to come out of nowhere, we had 30, 40 of the best high school kids in, in the greater Indianapolis area coming out to these workouts. And we only did about seven of them uh, over the summer. And there was um, there was a, a, a seven on seven program. Now seven on seven really wasn't around when we were in high school, but it's something that's kind of blown up uh, in the last about five or five six years uh, as a huge off season football um, training and development programs. So there was one really well known program here in Indianapolis called Indy Select, and all it was was a uh, it was a seven on seven program. So they, all they did is they put a team together of about, you know, 15 kids and they traveled around the country and played these seven on seven tournaments. So, um, the owner and the founder of that came to, to our workouts and he started bringing his any select kids. He's like I said, he had about 15 kids. He started bringing those guys to it and, uh, he he really liked it, and he had a, he had a conversation with me one day, and he was just like, "Hey, I'm getting older, you know. I've got grandkids now. Um, I'm really looking to get out of this. Is is this something that you would be willing to take over as my football program that I started?" He said, "Like, I don't want anything. Like, you can just have it. Um, I'm not selling it to you. You can just you can take the name. You can do whatever you want to do with it." So. I took I took a, a a seven on seven team of about fifteen kids. I com I combined it with the academy that I was starting, and I made Indy Select Football Academy. And now this we're going into our fourth year with it, fourth or fifth, fourth or fifth year, fifth year. Um, we're going our fifth year with it, and now it is the largest football academy and seven on seven program in the state. Um, we are the only I mean, one of the first things I did when I when I took it over is I, I started having conversations with Adidas. So now we are the only team in the state of Indiana that is sponsored, fully sponsored, fully sponsored by Adidas. Um, so now I've got opportunities to give these give these kids shoes, cleats, gloves, uh, jumpsuits, you know, book bags, whatever they need to hey. play football. <laughs> like whatever. As a matter of fact, I'm wearing my Andy Select. I got an Andy Select shirt on right now. That's our 
our, our logo. Hey, I that's lit. That. <laughs> um, but I got to, you know, I, I redesigned this. I redesigned it and I made it. I don't know if you can really see, but I made it to include like this is the the um, the uh, guy. What's it called? Uh, it's it, it's it includes a lot of the different aspects of the Indiana state flag. Mm. Uh, in the in um, so like the stars and and different things like that, and and it even says Indiana at the top, just like it was it does on the Indiana state flag. Um, so we incorporated that. We made a new logo. Um, but now, like I said, you know, we 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 made it a full academy. It has the travel seven on seven. It has the Adidas sponsorship. It has the exposure. So, um, you know, that's one thing that we lacked when we were in high school is we didn't have social media that we can blast out our, our highlights to, you know, every school in the country. Um, you know, we had to, I literally had to hand make I, I had to go buy DVDs. Uh, I bought a DVD converter, a VHS DVD converter. I, I took my highlight VHS tape and tur- turned it into DVDs, and I went and mailed it off to different schools. And I remember I even w- I, I went to visit Northern Illinois, and I hand-delivered that one at Northern Illinois. But, um, you know, this this program has given these kids an opportunity to get that get more exposure. Uh, you know, I got a, a, a few just great stories, but this one in particular, there's a kid who, um, named Jack Kaiser. Jack Kaiser went to Pioneer High School. Pioneer High School is in Royal Center, Indiana. Have you heard of Pioneer High School or Royal Center, Indiana? Exactly. Neither one. I, I can't point to it on a map, honestly. But I know it's two hours away from Indianapolis. And this kid drove down two hours, or two hours once a week to train and to compete with our program. Um, this kid, what his school is a one A school. So it has 389 students, you know, that me and you, we, we went to a five A school at the time and we had 3,400 students. This guy's got, he doesn't have 400 students in his school. They did things like uh, drive your tractor to work day or to school day and oh, stuff man. like that. Like it's a, it's a real country school, but anyways, this kid was he was a he was their quarterback he was their linebacker he was their uh he was their safety he was their kicker their punter he was everything to this team so um when i when he came down and we saw him play you know i started you know i started like hey this kid could he could play top top football he could play six eight football if he wanted to um he just happens to live on a farm out in the middle of nowhere so um you know i also had you know, I had the number one receiver, one of the top receivers in the country playing for Warren Central. Um, so colleges were constantly coming to see him at our school. And and they talked to me as I was a, the liaison to all the college coaches. So um, I developed a pretty good relationship with a bunch of different schools and a bunch of different uh, uh, coaches from different schools and Iowa in particular. Um and uh, Indy Select and Warren had already sent players to Iowa the uh, a couple years before, and we had I, I think right now we've got four students uh, who played at Indy in our program Indy Select program who also play for Iowa. So it was like a we kind of you know made those inroads there. So the I had told this Iowa coach like, hey, I got a linebacker who would who would he plays quarterback, linebacker, safety for his high school, but he would definitely be a good linebacker for you. He's an Iowa type linebacker. And the guy was like, all right, you know, send me his film, whatever, whatever. So, you know, the kid go, it's track season of his junior, uh, sophomore year. And the kid, um, he competes in his County track meet and he wins the 100, the 200, the shot put and the discus. Uh, he won what? all four of the, right. <laughs> he what? won all four of those events. So, they write a huge article about him in his town. So I take that, I take that, uh, that article and I send it to this coach at Iowa and I say, Hey man, this dude's an athlete. Like you need to come check him out. So a couple weeks later, that coach flies into Indianapolis from Iowa and, um, he's like, Hey, I'm here to see, you know, your wide receiver. He said, but I got some extra time on my hands. Let me, uh, where does this kid, you keep sending me information on where is his school at? Let me drive up there and see him. So I said, hey, man, I don't know where it's at. Like, I have no idea. But here's the address to the school. 
<laughs> so he drives he drives up there and he watches uh he watches Jack run uh track practice. He watches him practice. He comes back or he calls me that night and he's like, yo, it was an hour and a half out of my way to get to wherever he was, but that kid looks good. Like, can you give me some film of him doing some like football drills? So we quickly record some like him doing some football drills led by some any select coaches. I send that to him. Um, the very next day, the very next day, he gets his very first offer is from Iowa. Wow. So, um, and it's, and it's cool on so many different levels. And, and, and let me say why, like first, First off, no Division One school has ever even gone to Pioneer High School until, you know, I was able to say, hey, go look at this kid. Um, so no Division One school had ever been there before. Um, secondly, that it, during his senior year, that kid went on to win Mr. Football. You know, he beat, wow. he beat my receiver out, who was – my receiver was an All-American as a senior, senior. Like I said, he was Big Ten freshman of the year last year. Um, he beat him out for to be Mr. Football in Indiana as a quarterback of a 1A school. He won two state titles um, at that 1A school. And then he didn't choose to go to, to, uh, to, to Iowa. He actually decided to go to Notre Dame. So what's even wow. cooler, what's even cooler is this last week um, in Notre Dame's first game, he was, uh, he's a red shirt freshman right now. And he was at the very last minute, they put him in the starting lineup. I guess somebody got, uh, got sick or got hurt, couldn't play. So he was thrust into the starting lineup last week and he ended up being player of the game. Um, <laughs> right. Like they, they, they had it on, they, they, it's all over social media, like coach Kelly of, uh, of Notre Dame presenting him the game ball. Um, and How does then, that make you feel? Man, uh, outstanding. <laughs> and then even 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 one even a step further, and I know you I know you have a lot of respect for this guy. Uh, Tony Dungy tweeted him. It was like, "Hey, congratulations to Jack Kaiser, player of the game. Like he came in, did an outstanding job, you know, and just blew it up." So so to watch the development of this kid from being a sophomore in high school at a high school nobody's ever heard of, to to go on to win two state titles, to to become Mr. Football, to to you know have D one schools interested in him um for him to go to i i mean go to notre dame and then in his very first game as a starter and he wasn't supposed to he was the mvp of the game like that that is you know what we do it for you know um just being able to to help kids along because i mean i'm not i didn't make that kid a better i didn't make that kid the kid he is you know i may have sharp helped sharpen some some of his tools but i didn't make him I didn't make him, you know, the caliber of football player he was. That was him. But to help him get the exposure that he needed to to really blossom into the player that he has become, the young man that he's become, like that is that is what we do it for. And that's why, um, you know, we really enjoy that our, our, our offseason uh, seven on seven football academy program. Man, that's beautiful, bro. And I'm so proud to hear everything that you got going on, man, and proud to see everything that you're doing, bro. And I'm happy for you because I know that that really brings you a sense of joy watching somebody else get closer to their dream. So that's dope. Uh, Final words is uh, let the people know what ways that they can support you if um, your companies or your uh, youth league need something, maybe it's a, you need help with social media marketing or you need help on some back end stuff or what is it that you're actually needing? Because this community is about helping people who are doing great things. So right. it's going to be somebody that hears this, that has the skill set for whatever it is that you're needing. And then they're going to be able to reach out to you to provide whatever it is that support is. So what is it, uh, that you're actually needing or that could help you? How can the people support you? Uh, I mean, you can really just get in contact with me. If, whatever your skill set is, you know, we can find good use for it. Um, we are a 501c3, so um, we, act, we we take donations. We take sponsorships and things like that. Um, you know, that's part of that's part of the, 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 the bigger the, – one of the bigger things that I did when I took over this program and made it into the academy that I did is I wanted to make sure – 
that this this program that this this seven on seven is 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 available to to everyone you know so that adidas sponsorship helped with us being able to make this affordable for a lot of different families and not only just affordable but now these these families also like you're not gonna have to worry about buying new cleats for these kids you know every year because you know they're gonna get some cleats through through us so um, you know, our biggest thing is just sponsorship. You know, if 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 you want to sponsor a kid or, or or just sponsor the program, you know, we've got we like I said, Adidas is our main sponsor, uh, our apparel sponsor, and then we've actually been sponsored by um, like uh, Methodist Sports Medicine um, and a few other organizations. But you know, that is just our biggest thing. Um, you know, just trying to continue to make this equitable uh, uh, for everyone um, and 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 provide more, more things for them. Like we, we've started providing the education piece, tutoring and, and, and um, actually we have a counselor who, who tracks your GPA and, and make sure you're NCAA eligible and, and helps work with you so that make sure that you become NCAA eligible. Um, so we've, we've added all these different things. And like I said, just, uh, you know, supporting us financially would, would, would be great. We always take donations. Where can people donate? Or how go to our, form can people donate? Um, they can go to our website to get more information, which is uh, IndieSelectAcademy.com. Um, and you'll find all our information on there. You'll find all the alumni that have been through here. And we just had our first our first kid um, make it to the NFL from our program, uh, Jeremy hey, Chen. Hey, uh, He's actually a start. This is rookie year. He's a starting safety for the Carolina Panthers. He's number 21. Check him out. He went to Fisher's High School. Um, so we we have our first NFL player. Um, you know, we've got, we've got, you know, I think since I took over, there's been um, 70 players come through our program that went to D1 schools uh, wow. to play football. So um, again, uh, indieselect.com, indieselectacademy.com, um, you know, support us financially. If you can give a donation, that'd be great. Again, this is all, this money all goes to the kids. It doesn't go to our pockets. We're just trying to make sure that, you know, we can provide as much for these kids as possible. Definitely. And so that goes for if you got to connect with a company that do some water or something like that, you can definitely donate tons of water, tons of Gatorade, right. Powerade, Anything. any type Anything. of snacks, pastas. Right. There's good for kids before games. I'm just naming all the stuff we used to do before. Right, <laughs> right. I'll, we'll take all that. For real. <laughs> all that. Uh, so I'm going to actually, when we actually drop this podcast, I'm going to put a link. Uh, in the description tab uh, for the website. Also, name your social media handles and the social media handles for uh, your youth programs and your other companies. So my my uh, my handle is just cspan28. Um, you can find me on Instagram or Twitter that way. Um, our our social media for our, our Indie Select program is just Indie Select. The I N D Y S E L E C T, um, and that'll get you to our Facebook, our Instagram, our uh, Twitter. And then the other program that I also run is uh, FBU Team Indiana, which is a middle school travel tackle football league or football team. Uh, you've heard of like the the Army All American game, right? Yeah. This this is uh, the feeder program into the Army All American game. So um, it's a middle school program. It's tackle football. Um, there we're about to start up here in a couple weeks with them. And again, donations for that too. And that's just uh, FBU Team Indiana. That is our 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 uh, handle on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. So, uh, you know, find us, come support us. Like it's, like you just said, snacks. That that's we need snacks for traveling. Um, you know, any kind of any kind of donation we'll take. All right. Well, brother, I definitely want to appreciate you coming on Rising Tide. Again, Rising Tide is to educate, heal, and empower by bringing on the world's most brilliant minds and purest souls. We can definitely tell that he is both based upon what he is doing from what he did in his own personal life to what he's helping other people do in their personal life now, especially with this youth. So again, Chad, definitely appreciate you for coming on. Uh, let's stay in contact. I'm sure I can tell that when this one dropped, I know this is going to get a lot of responses, so the people probably going to want to want you back on. So for sure, I look forward to talking to you in the future, brother. Again, for, no, no doubt, man. Let me know when you want me back. I'll be there. I, I got you, brother. You have a prosperous day, man. Keep being a rising tide. All right, man. You too.